Your question is, just give up and quit. I'm the wrong guy to ask that question to. I never quit. What a difference a few months makes. Kevin McCarthy was the most powerful Republican in Washington less than three months ago. Now, in just a matter of a couple weeks, he will no longer be a member of Congress, resigning his seat after 17 years in the House, a rapid rise to the GOP leadership, and then a tumultuous year as Speaker, leading a razor-thin majority in a badly divided conference. Now, as Speaker and Republican leader, he was very chatty with the press and sometimes quite combative, as I witnessed firsthand. The votes just aren't there. Why has it been so hard for you? Have you spent any time with my conference? <laughs> but I mean, you know what's amazing to me? Here we are with one of the biggest things going on on uh, spending, and I can always count on you for the most inappropriate question. Why don't you ask the other questions? Why don't you I want do to ask? Them? No, curious, you don't. You I'm never want to change your position. I never changed my position. You, you don't. don't you don't. Want, days ago. You know what's interesting to me? Do you support a Texas lawsuit too? Do you regret supporting that lawsuit no, that would have been no, validated? No, no, I don't. You know why? Because well, it's going to the court. in a number of battleground states. All right, tell me when you're done with your questions and when I can answer. What does that do to the 18 members from that, Biden districts? Well, all, that all the Democrats voted to try to bring chaos? I, I think. No, I mean, that, you're, you're, that you guys are, you can't govern. That you can't govern. And, of course, that was after he was ousted as Speaker, and they were struggling to get someone, eventually Mike Johnson, to become Speaker. Wow, that was just, it's, ama it's amazing this has all happened in the last couple of months. Just, Mar Mariana, you walked the halls with me on the Hill, you're on the House side, talking to a lot of the members. What impact does his departure have on the House, and how are members dealing with this aftermath? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it, he, his impact will be felt so much more outside of the halls of the House rather than inside. And the reason why is because everyone says his one thing that he has been excellent at, and there is proof, even though, you know, he won the majority, it was way, way, way more narrow than even he expected, but still, he has, he has such a grasp politically on the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. Who should I recruit? Who makes sense in a district? Who can actually get there? And even tried to play this last year, trying to oust some of these more extreme Republicans who just didn't want to govern. So that is going to be the big impact, not to mention the fact fundraising. Yeah. My God. That is the first thing that House Republicans would say was, now what do we do? Yeah, and look, Mike Johnson's trying to fill that void. The chan challenge is, can he do that? But you're right. He really knew how to, he got the Republicans back to the majority, to his credit. Not as big of a majority as he wanted, which is why he ultimately got pushed out by the people who didn't want him there. And there's still this anger about all this. Yes, it happened a couple of months ago, and yes, there's a new Speaker of the House, but I spent the last week talking to a lot of those Republicans who are allied with Kevin McCarthy. They're not happy about the aftermath. What do you say to the eight Republicans who voted him out? Big screw up. Just completely inane behavior. And it's a great loss to the Republican Party and to the House in general, um, and a personal loss for me. And am I upset with the Eight Republicans that join all the Democrats to remove him? Yeah, absolutely. I'm upset with him. We are worse off for eight Republicans voting with all the Democrats to oust the most effective Republican speaker we've had in a long time. There's also no regrets among those eight Republicans. <laughs> I asked Tim Burchett, one of the eight to vote him out. He said, yeah, well, Kevin McCarthy will go make a lot of money. So, look, this is obviously going to be a problem as they head into the election year for the new speaker, managing these divisions and the motions that are still pretty raw here. Oh, totally. And I think it's... And the other big thing is, of course, their completely narrow majority. Now they only have one seat, um, and we saw them struggle when they had four. And so right. I think that's going to be a huge issue. And I know from the people that I talk to, they recognize they're not going to be able to get anything done, um, particularly before the elections really, you know, 2024 election cycle really ramps up. And I agree with Mariana's point. I think that as we get closer to the elections, that's really where you're going to see a lot of this impact, mm -hmm. impact felt. How will they be able to maintain the majority? Can they grow it? All of these things that people knew McCarthy did very well, that it's unclear how Johnson will do. I also think some of the frustrations are because you're seeing the new speaker faced with the same choices Kevin McCarthy was faced mm -hmm. with and really unable to do anything differently or better, but not having you know the sort of sword held over his head all the time right. so for those members that were mccarthy loyalists they're like hey what di what Ex difference they is there suddenly ultimately? are agreeing to higher spending levels <laughs> right. that mccarthy agreed to they agreed to had to back off that i made these threats from the right now they're they're okay with that they've they're he had johnson had to keep the government open for a short period right. of time 
okay with that, not pushing him out of office. We'll see if that ultimately happens. McCarthy was on CBS this morning talking about Trump. He said that he would support Trump. He told me a couple weeks ago something very similar. He said yeah. he would support Trump. I asked him as an official endorsement. He said we kind of hemmed and hawed about it, but he said he supports Trump. But he also had a bit of a warning for Trump. What President Trump needs to do in this campaign, it needs to be about rebuilding, restoring, renewing America. It can't be about revenge. He's talking about retribution day yeah, in, day yeah. out. He needs to stop that. He needs to stop that. Will Trump listen? No. <laughs> Definitely not, especially um, not to Kevin McCarthy. It is interesting, though. I mean, you can tell that Kevin McCarthy is far more candid now, that he doesn't have the weight of the House conference, GOP conference on his back. Um, but no, I mean, Donald Trump, very much. He's already, their relationship has become far more tense and strained over the past several months, mm -hmm. um, is not going to listen to McCarthy. You know, when we talked a little bit about the McCarthy impact down ticket, how that's going to happen in the House races. I had a chance to talk to actually the chairman of the House GOP campaign committee, Richard Hudson of North Carolina. He's trying to keep the Republican majority despite facing a very difficult map with redistricting and the like, and the prospects of the fact that Donald, Kevin McCarthy is no longer there to be that prolific fundraising presence that he was. Hudson, though, sort of said he kind of brushed it off and said that they believe they'll be in a strong position because of Donald Trump. Would you guys be able to keep the majority? Oh, yeah. We're going to grow the majority. Mm -hmm. No question. That's a bullish assessment, given the map. Well, you look at you look at the polling out there. The American people are fed up with Joe Biden and his policies. We won 15 seats. We beat 15 Democrats in 2020 with Trump at the top of the ticket. And uh, I think he'll do better this time than they did in 2020. I mean, is he right about that? I mean, they're going to help them grow the majority? I mean, ask them, they will say no, <laughs> right? They, yeah. wanna, they don't want to run with Trump. They want to, McCarthy actually in that clip was, that's, it showed his, how tactful he is politically because we saw in the 22 midterms where a lot of those vulnerable members became members of Congress because they were sticking to this is what we want to build, this is what we want to do, this is how we want to govern. That question of governance though really impacted many of those members in October when they literally didn't do anything, couldn't pick a speaker. That's when those members were also hearing, oh my God, we're, we're hearing from our constituents that we can't do anything. This is bad for us. And, you know, bringing that Trump question, especially in places like New York, California, where Trump actually ignites the Democratic base, that's where you're seeing a lot of yeah. the both Democratic and Republican playbook going through those two states. And Trump, I don't think, is really going mean, to help there. Mitch McConnell will tell you that it was Donald Trump in 2022 that essentially cost them their chance of the Senate Republican majority. He was on the campaign trail, late campaigning in some of these swing states. He also propped up some candidates who were weak and sort of flamed out and petered out during the election. But it's a different calculation among the House Republicans, probably because of the fact of the districts that they represent, which are very Trump heavy districts. I'm not at all surprised to hear the head of the National Republican Congressional Committee make that argument. I mean, what's the argument he's going to make, right? If he can't project confidence about it, who will? Uh, you can, it's an argument that some senators, I think, have um, a sort of better fact basis to make it on because those voters are looking at statewide races. They may be swingable states or the states on the map may lean a little more red. Uh, in those states, it can be a referendum against Joe Biden. I think in the swing congressional districts, uh, the ones that are um, that are really in play, uh, it is going to be a Trump versus Biden contest just as much as it is a Biden versus Biden yeah, contest. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Well, look, that's the big thing about the House races. Top of the ticket will drive a lot. It'll drive a lot of turnout. It'll impact the House. It'll impact the Senate. We'll see.